Hello. Let me, let me adjust my camera here. My little, my little webcam. Hi. <laughs> we forgot to do this before the stream because I was busy uh, doing. <laughs> I was busy setting this up instead. <laughs> Woo. -hoo. All right. Well, <laughs> happy birthday to Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. 15 years, apparently. That's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's... there it is, right? There's, it's the October 23rd, 2007 is when this game was first, when like the localized version was first released. So uh, it is the, the 15th birthday of this game that we're going to play today. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I like almost didn't stream this today. Almost missed the chance to, to play this game on its 15th birthday. So, so we're we're gonna play it, and that's that's all there is to it. Uh, we are, I believe, we made it to the final court section of this episode, Ace Attorney Three, Episode Three. So we're gonna see what happens there. Hopefully my little graphics in the corner won't get in the way too much. I might I might move it over somewhere else. We'll we'll see. Or, or like resize it, adjust it, whatever. We'll, we'll see what happens. My little light here is really annoying for some reason. I'm just like 
that worth having on even? Put it down. Very dim. I have some nice natural light coming in right now, but it might start to get dark. It's getting to that time of year when it gets dark real early. Hmm. Anyway, let's continue. When's the last time I played this? October 2nd, huh? Now it's October 23rd, so it's been a minute. <laughs> been a minute since I last streamed this game. I don't entirely remember what happened last time, but we'll, we'll be fine. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll solve the case and, and prove our innocence and all that. <clears throat> Good morning, Miss. Good morning, Miss. Good morning, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Good freaking morning. Notifications go away. <laughs> Good morning, Maggie. So, uh, what do you think is going to happen today, sir? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? We just don't know. Well, what's gonna happen? I don't- I don't freaking know what's gonna happen. You, you think I know? You think he knows? You, you think he knows anything? You think there are any thoughts in this head? Anyway. <laughs> Yesterday's session didn't go so well. It ended on a giant mystery. <laughs> in case you forgot. Th th thanks- thanks for the... the reminder. It's true. You still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Damn. Are you okay, Nick? Are you okay? Are you like okay? <laughs> huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I'm totally fine. Mm -hmm. Look how fine I am. I saw that! That little flash of doubt in your eyes! No, that, that wasn't doubt, that was determination. I am filled with determination. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get it going to the defendant seat. <laughs> Come on, girl. Time to prove your innocence. Roger. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Great. Yeah, no pressure. Hey, <laughs> bow. Uh, hey. <laughs> Hey, Detective Gumshoe, you look angry. Is everything okay, man? Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. How did you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Nothing weird about that, just, just watching you. <laughs> oh. You look like you lost the case already! Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? <laughs> Here, maybe this'll help. A little bottle of nail polish. Hashtag girl power, you know? <laughs> huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy, too? <laughs> Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me you don't remember this thing. Doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. This is the small bottle that turned up in Trebian's kitchen a couple days ago. Wow, look at all these little bottles! Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute! There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And sniff, it doesn't smell. <laughs> Finally got the analysis results back from the lab. Ooh. So, what is it? Is it poison? 
it poison? Is it? Is it? Is it? Rain up, pal. It's the medication. use only, apparently. Really? Years? You mean... Yeah, it's medication. It was the medication Glen Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glen Elg's cure medicine doing in the kitchen? Your medicine found covered in unidentified fingerprints in the kitchen. Uh, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Uh, anything on that? Uh, someone screwed up, so we only had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour, and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... Packed as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today. Got it? What? Huh? You want you're pregnant? Huh? What? <laughs> what do you want to do with defense? <clears throat> Today's trial. I'm going to expose that guy for what he's done. Or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. Damn, okay. January 8th, 10 a.m., District Court Courtroom number four. Here we are in the courtroom. Bam. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Good then we'll get underway at once. Yes, today we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Pudo with his big red nose. What is even wrong with this strange man? He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder to the victim's copy. However, the witness's testimony was played with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. <clears throat> Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet, the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Mm -mm -mm. I'm stopping the music. <laughs> and starting my own music. <laughs> Allow me to enlighten you, your honor. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. Have you ever tried spinning in a circle? It's so much fun. You should try it. <laughs> You've lost me already, Mr. Goodow. <laughs> it's my birthday. I'm a little birthday boy, and you have to listen to everything I say, okay? Let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Mm -mm. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Gotta gotta be progressive. Don't don't be a, a 
silly old man lost in, in the past. Right? <laughs> Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know, you, you, you know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the set. And today, I'll prove it. Uh, uh, very well. Uh, let the first witness take the stand. Okay, it's this guy. And you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone! I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and head chef of La Trebie Restaurant. Enchanté. Oh, look at his little pose. Uh, the way this character, this, this entire character's design and writing is... It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> oh my god, no! I not no! Oh la la, monsieur, as I, you can see, I am the per perky gentleman, no? I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Uh. <laughs> Remember, Judge, we must not dwell on the past. <clears throat> on the day of the incident, you were in Trebien's kitchen. Isn't that right? With you, monsieur. What? <laughs> Everything feels right. I mean, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he, just, he just smiles and sips his coffee. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm flattered. Um, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. Wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything? thinks I'm hot. Nothing new. Very well, your testimony please, witness. <clears throat> please tell the court what happened that day at Trebier. Oui, volontiers. The guy, the, the judge really looked at this guy and said, are you a woman? D judge, are you, are you like, is what what is even going through your head, Judge? You can, you can't just ask someone if, if if they're a woman. I mean, damn! The, the, the judge really looked looked at Armstrong and said, "Oh, damn, girl, what's your pronouns?" <sighs> okay. <clears throat> At trebie. When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art deco that day. Like having a large mirror between la table. <laughs> a what? A what? <laughs> there was a mirror. There was a mirror. You know, I was already thinking this would probably be a shorter stream just because I started late. Now I'm thinking it's going to be a short, shorter stream because it's going to just just drain all my energy. <clears throat> there was a large mirror between the tables. Hey, perhaps that is what la old man was looking at. This man needs to stop putting lie in front of everything. That's not how French works. <sighs> La cup, la earpiece, and la glasses. He would have said everything in reverse. No. I am taking 2 HP damage per second. <clears throat> yeah, me too. Me too, Phoenix. A grand mirror. La most enormous mirror. 
And suddenly the mystery disappears. And it's that easy, folks. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Ooh, that, that would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. The heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Yeah, me too, except it's like, it's 4.18 p.m. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> well then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay, sure. That trivia. Let's just, uh... everything. And who were the two customers exactly? Of course, la young man who died. And la other not so young man. Hmm. You are referring to yesterday's witness, I presume? About the other man Maggie says she saw at the table. Right. Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? Guess we'll just have to try a different approach. Oh, interesting. We are experimenting with some art deco. We were experimenting with, with what? <laughs> How come I never heard about that before today? You are not familiar with the language of interior design, monsieur? Please stay on topic. Now, why didn't you tell the court about this before? But I did, just a few moments ago. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, this is Deco you mentioned? Are you, are you re referring to some sort of... Do, do, do what? <laughs> Des coctures? <laughs> Decacture. Or <laughs> Decacture. Freaking decacture. It's it's archaic, archaic uh, noun for a decoction, which is also not a commonly used word. D okay, what's a decoction then? <laughs> I I can I can look up things that rhyme with decoction. <laughs> It, it's an extraction or essence of something obtained by boiling it down. Damn, okay. Related terms, decoct. It's to make an infusion or to reduce or concentrate by boiling down or to heat as if by boiling or to reduce or diminish, to digest in the stomach, to devise. These are all things that the verb decoct can mean. We're learning today. <laughs> anyway, decocture. Uh, no, no, art, art deco. It's, it's a style of design, your honor. I also don't know how the... the is it, is it how that's pronounced in... Least, I mean, I'm, I'm still googling. My phone here. What the heck is... Art, art deco? Uh, deco? Decoratif? Short for the French, art decoratif. How, how do English speakers pronounce it, though? 
<laughs> is, it, is it just like deco as in decoration? I don't know why I'm just I'm so, so concerned with how to pronounce this <laughs> and what it even means. How to pronounce decorative. It's like, do we, do, how do you, how do English pronounce? Do you say deco or deco? <laughs> Art deco? I don't freaking know. Probably doesn't matter. <laughs> He's talking about interior design, walls, carpets, ceilings, all that kind of thing. Ah, oh, yes, of course, that's Deco. <clears throat> I was simply trying to achieve a more live minute <laughs> look for my restaurant. <laughs> a more la effeminate look, you know? <laughs> uh, I can't tell if this game would be more or less enjoyable if I didn't know French. <laughs> I was planning the most bouldery modeling of La Decor. Alright, like having a large mirror between the tables. What the hell are you talking about? How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Oh, something about uh, 4 meters wide and uh, we about 2 meters high. Those are some interesting dimensions for a mirror. One meter is about one yard. Holy glass in a frame, that's huge! That really is, like, like what a hell? <laughs> I was intending to install it on la ceiling eventually. Why? <laughs> ceiling? Was there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. Man, no, but I decided not to go through with it in the end. Um... Uh, uh, tell me more, please. If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Bird's testimonies. There was no mirror. I knew it. Objection! Objection. You didn't ask, trite. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not think to ask if there was a giant mirror? I mean, come on. You, you gotta ask if the restaurant has a giant mirror. <laughs> you have only yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What? <laughs> a mirror was delivered to Trivia the day before the incident. Really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. And as it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. So was the mirror there or not? <laughs> this just doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to Trapier, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Ah, uh, if you want to doubt someone, Trite. Look in the mirror. Speaking of mirrors, I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. <laughs> no, the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflection in a mirror. Uh, no. I pulled it. I expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Objection! Uh, no. <laughs> Normally. <laughs> How does normality come into this? Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I gotta dink my waiter. Hmm. <laughs> That's lame, Trite. <laughs> Being normal is lame. Are you 
trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible. Is that it? Are you saying I'm not here right now because I'm not normal? Because I'm a weirdo and a freak and not normal? <laughs> Where does that leave? The oh, damn, you're insulting their appearance? You with your funky visor and white anime man hair? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Where does that leave the porky-headed lawyer and the top-knot chick over there? <laughs> and the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here. <laughs> well, right? Well? <laughs> oh god, he's, he's such a loser. I love him. The ungodly cool guy. <laughs> Are you saying I'm too cool to be real? I do not have a top knot. <laughs> Mr. Godot is correct. You're all freaks, all three of you. <laughs> this is so much. This, is, this game is so much. Happy birthday to this freaking game. Lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. <laughs> Logic as one la day. Uh huh, yeah, mm. Uh, uh, three more, please. Everything? You would have seen everything in reverse? Nick, we should take a second think about what old CD said in his testimony. What did he phrase it again? The oh boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No oh, question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was on his left ear without a doubt. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup in his left hand. If he saw everything he described reflected in a mirror... Then everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right, huh? That clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess. Or does it? Ah. <laughs> kind of hard to believe everything's the fault of a mirror, but... I think I'm getting it. Do you think old CD saw it? Everything, everything for reflection. If he did, it would have spent all the contradictions in his testimony, but that just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's gotta be something in that old man's testimony. Gotta dig deeper. Okay, let's go. Your piece in the glasses. All the glasses, you say. But the glasses are on the left. Objection! <clears throat> the coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The boy was wearing it on the same side as his funny glasses, blah blah blah. So, to summarize... We were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. If Mr. Kudo saw all that as a reflection in a mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactement! You see, monsieur, now that you think about it, it's not so hard, no? Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? <clears throat> Mr. Wright is correct! It's like he's right, you know? Ha ha ha. Reflected in a mirror. Get a little tired. <laughs> <clears throat>
Then we would expect the victim's airbase to have been over on our guy. How bitter. Right, you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. Uh, are we talking about your coffee or something completely different? <clears throat> You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume? He, I broke the vase. Sorry, apology letter. I, I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony? Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit. Other than throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. L? Here it is, the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. L's HMD made a big impression on the old man. Gulp. saw the earpiece and those new bangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on his left ear. Do you hear his left ear? <clears throat> Do you like my impression of the old man? Ah, uh, well, trite. That's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. I don't know, I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. The devil was good. <laughs> You should get a career in voice acting instead of being a prosecutor, you know? Enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in my testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. Haha, <laughs> nice one, Maya. <laughs> a mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds. Nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Oui, I can explain. Please, if you will look at the plans of la restaurant. I'm gonna take a throat lozenge. Hold on. <laughs> Woo, let's see. Let's start playing music for the next one. There we go. Oh, how are we doing, everyone? I'm making, making noise there. <clears throat> says let's hear your battle cry <laughs> no Stretch everyone. Twitch is telling me I have zero viewers right now, so, um, hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, what's up?
They should make a throat lozenge that doesn't take five minutes to suck. <laughs> lozenge. <laughs> All right. Alors, is everyone sitting comfortably? Ooh, that's such a dumb place to put a mirror. Oh my god. It also makes no sense. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> La mirror, it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two halves. There is only one seat from which you could have seen an image of the victim. That isn't that literally not where the witness was sitting? Wasn't he like coaster capture here? Wasn't he like at this table? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Hmm, anyway. That was the la seat at the table next to la victims. That was where la old man was sitting. After that terrible incident occurred, I moved La Mirror so it was not in the way. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. You trust me, yes, yes? <laughs> yes, I see no problems with the explanation we have just heard. Yeah, okay, Judge. On the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. <laughs> what a naughty little coquette I am, confusing all the men like this. You know what? We're um we're not we're we're not celebrating the localization of this game anymore. It was a mistake. Um, not something to celebrate, actually. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, oh, I just clicked out of the game by mistake. <clears throat> oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, we can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. <laughs> Arg. I hate that guy. Bisexual on bisexual violence. <laughs> you said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volontier, of course. <clears throat> Very well, Mr. Right, your cross examination, if you please. Okay. Save again, just just to uh, have that save. La mirror, it was in the middle of la restaurant, dividing the two abs. There is only one seat from which you could have been on the victim. Yes, okay, I'm um, gonna uh, press this. You oh, run this by me again. La mirror was here, correct? We. We? Really? Because <laughs> I know if I were you, I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would be in the way. Objection! Look who's talking, trite. Huh? What do you mean? You're obstructing my view, among other things. But, but, but this is my seat in the courtroom. Rebier's charm is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. Temporarily placing a mirror in that spot would hardly be in the way. Unlike you, right? <laughs> I 
tell you, Monsieur, La Mirror was there in the middle of the restaurant. Okay. Um, tell me more about this. And where would that be? Oh la la, look how you lean towards me. <laughs> I always attract the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. Mr. Armstrong, strong, tell the court what you know at once. I attract the older ones too, you know, and some. Shall I tease you too? thinking about it. <laughs> oh, 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 damn. I'm already seeing a very hot someone. Though I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. <laughs> Godot out here like, uh, sorry sir, I'm not single. <laughs> Just instant, we're in court, hello? <laughs> I bet she has mocha cream skin and cappuccino perfume. Damn, Maya. <laughs> yeah, I would tell you. There was only one seat from which you could have seen. Uh, Alright, that, that's all we got from pressing the See the victim from that particular seat. Well, I mean, it, it is, I mean, Monsieur, it is obvious, no? If you look at La Plans, you will understand. La victim would have been reflected in La Mirror like so. Now hold on a second. If the mirror only extends that far, then there's hello, duh. It's just hello. <laughs> anyway. If you were sitting at La Table next to him, you would see everything, no? Oh, that's the seat old CD was sitting on that day. When the poisoning happened. The old man was sitting at the table next to the victim? Why does that seem kinda odd? After La Terrible Incident... Okay, tell me about La Terrible Incident. Did you... Moved the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? We exact them all. I carried it out of La Restaurant's Zen. You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself? What can I say? I know how to pick things up and some. for the gay flirting in this courtroom today. He loves it. <laughs> Gato actually laughed at something. <clears throat> well, uh, given the witness's physique, just, just very, very big muscle, I suppose it is possible. <laughs> you, uh, Mr. Armstrong, you do you have very large muscles. <laughs> Did you move anything else from the front seat, no, Mr. Armstrong? You look like the obliging type, no? Mm. This is... This is April, May, five years on Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> Nothing except La Mirror. Hmm. Mr. Wright, is there something you wouldn't have said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. <laughs> huh. 
suffering from a case of heartburn trait. Oh, I have just the thing for that. An oil with golden myrrh and frankenstein. A few drops to your coffee and voila, enjoy. Um, um, dude, you're not, you're not supposed to consume essential oils. <laughs> You're not supposed to consume aromatherapy products, I don't think. <laughs> I love drinking essential oils. <laughs> Focus, Phoenix. Breathe. Just need to ignore those two and just find some evidence. It is pretty strange, though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. You'd think someone would have, but Maggie didn't, and neither did Old ZD. And the only logical explanation is that there was no mirror inside Trivia that day. Now oh, I've just got to prove it. Somehow. Okay, what have I got? Sports paper, I have job listings, I have the lunch special, the scooter, the loan contract. The vase. Make sure I'm putting the right button here. Alright, this tells me nothing. Nothing new anyway. <clears throat> Prime photo! I have this combined with the broken vase testimony that goes that the, the the old guy was not sitting at this table because he broke the vase at his table and this table has an intact vase. But I don't think I can really, like, I, I would have to present those two pieces of evidence together and I don't really know how I would accomplish that. Ticket, apron, potassium cyanide, prescription bag, a calendar, pooter virus, and a delicious lunchbox. Hmm. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna save in the third save slot. Just Remember that. <laughs> My most recent save is in the third slot, and I'm going to... Yeah, I could try doing, like, the picture or the vase here. Um, first. First, I'm gonna try... I don't think... This is why I saved. I don't think I really have the evidence to prove... Obviously, I can't prove that he's the one who touched this. But the fact that it was in the kitchen, like, who else would have put that in the kitchen? I guess could be Maggie, which is not a good look, but I don't know. I just kind of want to see if anything happens. I don't think anything will happen. Um, yeah, that's... nope. <laughs> I, f I, I didn't think so. I just wanted to try. Now, how about this one? Let me see if I can... Let's try to... Music stopped. Ooh. Interesting. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. I think I have the right idea. Okay, okay, okay. Mm, excuse me. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist? Huh. Sounds like you're describing yourself, right? 
Damn. Then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. What is for something that should not exist in this photo? Um, the device. This one. I think it's pretty obvious that this is what should not be in the picture. The face. Well, probably draws a more connection to this. I'm with the Vegas accessory. Um, Your Honor, I'm telling you that there should have been no vase or boss at this table. <laughs> because it very con clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. I did it. I got it. Let's go. <clears throat> Bam. There is one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Actually, he was sitting at the other table that's also next to the victim, because there was like... You know, next to, in, like, <laughs> rows and columns, you know? You know what I mean? You understand? <laughs> Objection! <clears throat> Don't be an idiot, Dwight. That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. What? <laughs> There is only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Trebier that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Monsieur! Objection! Don't try to confuse the court, trite. Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase, or vase, or I never know how to pronounce this word because both pronunciations are technically correct. <clears throat> While the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary. In his own words, I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? Oh, hi! Happy birthday to Godot! Yes! Thank you for wishing this, this terrible, terrible man a happiest birthday. <laughs> Sniffle. He was right! There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. We just spent so long learning that there was a mirror, and then that there wasn't a mirror. <laughs> this game... <clears throat> In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear in which he couldn't ear? Ear, 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 ear. It's, it's important to, to determine whether or not there was a mirror at the crime scene. <laughs> Gido is not having a good time. He's having a bad birthday. <laughs> ah. You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? Why are we still talking about this? I thought we already determined he's not a reliable witness. If I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you- are you gonna- hey, Nick, are you okay? Do you, do you need to take a break? I'm, like, worried about you. <laughs> Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? Old men love to be little tricksters and pranksters and liars. There's more than just this one contradiction, yeah? What do you mean? 
I'm gonna go in the void. I'm, I'm so confused. It's time for everything to fade to black. Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It lies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. I think I know the reason. But nothing in this case is adding up. Oh yeah? Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Um, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh. The what? The victim was a phony. The ear doctor made a mistake. What the, what the, huh? I mean, the simplest answer is Mr. Kudo made a mistake. Um... Uh, if, if this is the answer, the victim was a phony, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I'm just going to pick this one and see what happens. Clearly, Mr. Kudo made a mistake. Mr. Trite, you're the one who brought up all these contradictions. And you're trying to tell us the old man just made a mistake. We can wrap up this case right now with a guilty verdict. Um, no. How about it, Mr. Wright? Should I just declare Ryan guilty? Um, no, that's not the best I can come up with, actually. Actually, I never said that. It never happened. <laughs> the ear doctor made a mistake? I believe we're looking at this wrong, the wrong way. It was actually the doctor's mistake. What? Yes, the doctor got the wrong ear. Objection! <laughs> Well, I believe we saw an autopsy report yesterday when the state of the... Yeah, okay, yeah, I figured. I'm beginning to wonder if not your eardrum is ruptured. This is not an idea. Okay, well, the victim was a phony, apparently. I'm gonna scream and scream and scream. <laughs> this case is riddled with contradictions. Yet, there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. What is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> this game. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, the victim that Mr. Kuno saw wasn't Mr. Glen Elg at all. <laughs> it was an imposter. It was a, an imposter, and the text is in red. It was the red imposter among us. <laughs> Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. Obviously. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. My, my audio is getting choppy, even my headphones can't handle this. <laughs> Damn, boy. <laughs> this is so much coffee just to spit it out. Beautiful. Order, order of the court, settle down or I'll clear the courtroom. Quiet, Gramps. 
Why don't you clean her out of here, huh? Damn. What did you say? Right. Are you saying what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. The mom pretended to be Gun Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Objection! Get, get real, Trite! Get real! Real. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was... The serving girl brought in a javachino, but she put something in it. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. It's so hard to believe, but... There was one and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Was she also an imposter? Objection! Everyone's an imposter! <laughs> Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? Two imposters? Oh, even more, because there was also the imposter Phoenix Wright in the first in the trial. But this is like a redo of that trial, you know? There were like at least three imposters involved in this case. Woohoo! It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but it's also true that the chef was there. You would have noticed what was happening. Look at him; he's so sad. You're making him sad. How, how dare you make him sad? That's right. Well, witness, if your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you've known about it, correct? Oh la la, this is most difficult for me. No, it's not difficult for you. <laughs> it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trebier that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. Mm, yes. The defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain, in detail, the events in the restaurant that day. Ooh. We in the restaurant. Betty T on, excuse me. <clears throat> La victim, Monsieur Elg. He came to my restaurant alone. I remember La Old Man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word he won la lottery, Monsieur Elg became very excited. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he won the freaking lottery, let's go! It was approximately five minutes later that la poisoning still and shouldn't occurred. No, there was no time for a phony to do la acting. Are you sure? Uh, just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Je vous demande pardon. Forgive me your honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. <laughs> what you have just done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. Ooh. We oui. can punish me, you big strong old man. For now, we will hear your cross examination, Mr. White. Blah, 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 blah. Huh. Took that perjuring heart a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross examination. <laughs> I'm gonna get him good. 
Okay, Phoenix, if you say so. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give myself a save again. Go you know, back, back to the first one, we're gonna press everything. Excuse me. <clears throat> Was he alone at his table as well? No, I saw him from the kitchen. And the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it quite differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Objection! Huh. Unfortunately for you, Troyte, yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. Uh, you know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me. <laughs> uh, huh? Of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. It, uh, yeah, yeah, are, are you saying you like it? Are, what, huh? <laughs> you saying you like seeing me squirm? It, this, what kind of coffee has he been drinking? <laughs> Not coffee, it's love. It's love that's bittersweet. Is he found his love? <laughs> What's going on? It's quite a laugh. Hearing Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. <laughs> what is going on in this courtroom? Everyone's flirting with each other. Old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? I mean, he comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. Worth a sip just for the experience. Damn. Oh, you make me so happy, monsieur. You are most welcome anytime. I said it was worth one sip. And nothing more. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. Oh, what time was it? Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh no, I cannot remember, monsieur. We were told by our witness yesterday. Oh, it comes to the crime was reported at 225. Okay, well, the crime was reported at 225. Um, but what about when the guy arrived? Oh, about 20 minutes after he arrived. So he arrived, like, just after 2? The victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2 10 p.m., no? And just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful! Ha! Ah, ha! Ha! Well, huh. Can't sit here and all the time and do nothing now, can I? <laughs> Mr. Armstrong, are you free after the trial? <laughs> and time of day will be added to the witness especially. We, oui, monsieur judge, everything I do, I do it for you. Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? <laughs> Damn, is that why the judge asked Armstrong if he was a woman? It's like, don't is it gay to be attracted to? <laughs> Oh man, I'm taking so much psychic damage from this game. <laughs> hmm. I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. Hmm, he's even humming a song to himself. <laughs> Sure about the time mode. I mean, we just went over that. Uh, I'm sure, after two. It is the time I stop serving the lunch menu. My voice just disappeared for a moment there. Quite right. I always break for lunch when the restaurants are serving their specials. I've been known to wind up a case early just to make it on time. <laughs> Judge, are you okay? 
I guess you should never get between a hungry judge and his lunch. Would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. Witness, get on with your testimony, please. Hold it! Only customers were Mr. Kuda and oh, Vade. How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Mr. Trite? You'd never catch me drinking the same blend twice. I just, I, you really, man? You sure about that? Oh, my eyes are watering. That's all. <laughs> You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind bird seed to make coffee. You catch my drift. There's a hole in this testimony somewhere. I'm sure of it. Mm, he became very excited when he won the lottery. Did you see him? No, I was in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, Yes, half a million bucks. Presumably, did the defendant heard that too, then, correct? Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened dove. What about Mr. Kudo? That old man choked on some bird seeds that got stuck in his throat. Hmm. Didn't we now have yet another incident on our hands? doing at that point. Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman, monsieur. Okay. But, uh, sorry? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Service la renowned chef, Jean Armstrong, and la tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. Oh, I see. <laughs> Clarice! We, oui, I was writing a poem. Angry tale of a chef in half a million dollars of debt. Cooking for a man who won half a million dollars on la lottery. Buddy, you're you're just just straight up giving yourself a motive right there. <clears throat> it is called Wah. It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for la court. Please don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you sure there was no harm? You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? Yes, loud men to call from La Payphone. By your own argument, Trite. The purpose of this phony victim's performance was so the old man would see it. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Yeah, it seems the shadow of doubt has been lifted in this apart. Uh, I don't know about that. I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to this case, huh? Yeah, it happened at his restaurant. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm, he was impersonating Mr. Elk, and I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed, too? He felt unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah, you mean that's when the police staged his act? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in this testimony. Okay. Ooh. Let's look at what evidence I have. Wait a minute. I know. Oh, I know. In other words, we're not working on the lottery. How's this? Uh huh. Well, this happened at 1.30 p.m. This happened at 1.30 p.m. So, that doesn't line up, does it? Objection! 
I'm afraid I've finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, quoi? What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of the half-million-dollar lottery ticket. Oui, that must be la show M M Monsieur Elk was listening to. I just, I keep not expecting it to, to, to shorten Monsieur to Mon. <laughs> M-O-N. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. White. Uh, I wonder... You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2 p.m., correct? Really? I am sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time because I had just finished serving la lunch menu. Get to the point, trite, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30. Yeah. It claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30? Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. <laughs> and yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. No! This victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum, catching a show that was already over. There is only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter, acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Wow. <laughs> yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Trebier that day. The real Glen Elg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer. And the phony Glen Elg, acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. Oh, I'm curious now. of death was between 1.30 and 2.30. That is a big, big chunk of time. I was wondering, like, what could he, if he died that much earlier, wouldn't the autopsy give us some evidence there? But no, time of death was between 1.30 and 2.30. That's a whole hour. <laughs> Glen Elg backing out the events from Mr. Kudo's workings. It certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Ah, uh, quite a performance, Troit. You were almost on a roll. Now what? But sadly, you lack the rock-hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this? Music Theory 101? <laughs> Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony elg is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain, then, where the real Glen Elg is? I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. Um, you, you, you do, Phoenix. You definitely do. However, that time, the real Glen Elg was already dead. Okay, yeah, but where was he? Where was the body? <laughs> well, certainly the obvious conclusion. <laughs> uh, thank you, Trite. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? <laughs> well, I presume you can prove this theory of yours? Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The missing corpse? 
According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. The customer was the phony Glen Elk. Then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Oops. <laughs> oh, I'm stretching. Oh, oh, oh. The prosecution is valid, Mr. Wright. <laughs> the prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by pressure for answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I don't freaking know. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Evidence. The oh, bullets with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden. Ooh, I thought I had him with that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. Where was the body? had the medicine in his pocket and it fell out when the body was moved to the kitchen and then back out from the kitchen. That's what I'm thinking. That's, that's my theory. Save so we can quickly load just in case. <laughs> nice little typo there. It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside Trebier. Hmm, interesting. Where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Do you care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright? Um, yes. The exact location where the body was concealed. Well, I don't know about exact location, but I would say in the kitchen. Take that! It was hidden here. Nice, I uh, know. Okay, can you back it up? Where is the evidence that proves the body was hidden at this location? How about this? Is that it? Is that it? Did I get it? Did I get it? Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? <laughs> no, 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 no. I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only use the very best bottles, monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trebien. Eh? Quoi? But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. I'm still not over Godot saying you should put aromatherapy oil in your coffee. <laughs> I'm just, I just can't stop thinking about that. Drink essential oils. Don't, don't do that. Uh, no, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? Had Mr. Elg visit an otolaryngological, uh, or otolaryngological clinic at an ear, nose, and throat doctor, <laughs> and was given medication that day. You can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the results here. The lab results of uh, whatever I was to say. 
the contents of the bottle matched the prescription that was given to Mr. Elg. Bored. Glen Elg's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen, at which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong? When the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you were setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. No! This is an extraordinary development. Witness, did you? Did you murder Mr. Glenelg? Never! I could not do such an horrible thing. Uh, huh? <laughs> Man chokes coffee so hard it causes an earthquake. <laughs> but, but Mr. Goodall. Every time I get lied to, I'm always down a mug of coffee. <laughs> Good oh, you're such a freak. I love you so much. That's one of my rules. Uh, do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? And I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. I was having fun flirting with you, but now you you betrayed me, broken my heart. <laughs> How about a brand new flavor in your ear, my H division friend? <laughs> To Mont Pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me, por favor. Oh, oh now you're speaking Spanish? Yo hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. <laughs> Damn, Judge. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? No, 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 absolutely no! I simply... I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot, right, Gramps? Yes, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Goddard's coffee mug awaits you. I'm, I'm allowing the prosecution the right to, to throw a coffee mug at you if you lie. This is this is a legitimate, real punishment. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting distracted by notifications on my phone. Get, a, get, the, get, a, get that away. As does my gavel. I'm also gonna bonk you in the head with my funny hammer. Yes. It be. It is clear. Now, what do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well, begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. So, I think... If I hit save, yeah, this is 4-1, and I think there's going to be a part 4-2. So I want to see if we can complete the 4-1... And then, and then, um, basically once we hit a to be continued, I want to finish. And hopefully that won't take too much longer, because it's already 5.30, and I would like to be finished this stream, and rest, and eat dinner, and all those things. <laughs> uh, final testimony! Please don't take too long. The Confession. 
it is true. I ate La Body in La Kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. I did not kill him, I swear it. You must believe me. You were forced? But by who? I cannot say, or I will be erased. Uh, let's try a different question then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? There was. There was another man. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. We gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. Wow, I wonder who the real killer is. <laughs> I wonder. Tell me more about how you ate the body in the kitchen. Did you carry the body by yourself? Oui, I carried him, and I carried Maggie too. You see my muscles? I am the strongest. I have strong arms, that's why they call me Armstrong. <laughs> me too. When she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. Would not leave her there. But why did you hide the bodies? Me and Forsten to do it, I had no choice. Man, who was he? No, no, I cannot say. I fear for my life. He's really scared. You'll just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. If he won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. Um, what reason? And what would that reason? What, what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? Do you know, Monsieur? Uh, yes. Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit old to get away with that. Good job, Phoenix. Not judging him for calling himself a maiden just because of gender, but because of age. <laughs> gender, who cares? But he's, he's like too old to be a maiden, you know? <laughs> Maya, Maya's the one who's not being progressive enough here. Come on, Maya. Go, go, go time out, girl. Maya. <laughs> Maya. <laughs> I can't finish this, the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So I'll just have to prove it with evidence. Yeah, okay, but first I'm gonna press everything. <laughs> Before I die, the game is like, come on, use evidence. And I'm like, no. Let's press everything. So you're claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? We, oui, that's right. We are believe you. If we are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong, you must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. Hmm. He's already confessed this much. He might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Maya, you're being very insensitive. This man is fearing for his life. Come on. <laughs> then suck it to him, Nick! Uh, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll throw hands. <laughs> Alright, what, what events do I have? Um, I mean, I have... I do have this. I have that. So I'm gonna... So long as there was a reason why I did not use. Well, I'm gonna save. I, I have no shame in, in saving a lot. <laughs> uh, there's like so many things here. Hello. Um, how about this? Uh, you have a half a million dollar debt, don't you? 
Half a million dollars? Is this true, Mr. Armstrong? We oui, je suis désolé. I was weak and I borrowed la money. This is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. Okay. That's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you by this man. Or was it this one? No, it's this one. It's the tender lender man. Take that! A half million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. We, oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong, La Tiger, he told me he was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting La Victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried La Body and La Inconscient Maggie out of La Dining Area into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. That guy. That freaking guy. One, I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison and lottery tickets that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it. I was... I was not. It is despicable. <laughs> Despicable. Mr. Godot? What? What are, you, what are you talking to me for? You will summon this fury of Tigre as a witness. Ooh. Oh, I doubt that can be arranged today, so we will adjourn for now. <clears throat> Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Uh, no. <laughs> 30 minutes. It will work. The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. Ma'am, okay. How the... Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Very well. No request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take the stand. Till then, court is good to adjourn for a 30 minute recess. To be continued. We did it. We made it to the to be continued. And the last section, I think, should be the last one. So, uh, yeah. Oops, I didn't mean to. I can't do that because that'll make the thing continue and we don't want that yet. We're not continuing it right now. We're continuing it next time. Everyone wish wish Godot a happy birthday. <laughs> Cause this is that's that's this is gonna be the end for for now, for today. For today on this lovely anniversary of this game's localized release. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> what a game! <laughs> what can I say? We'll, we'll finish it uh, probably either Friday or next Sunday, depending on how things go, depending on what my week looks like. 
We shall see. Um, damn, that was exhausting. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. That's that's great. That's cool. That's neat. We're we're going to see probably the end of this case next time. Uh I'm going to say probably next Sunday, but we'll see. Could could happen on Friday, could happen um even later <laughs> if I depending on whether or not I feel up to it. <laughs> But there we go. That was that was the stream for today. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, actually, uh, next week is gonna be like Halloween time next weekend because Halloween is next Monday, not tomorrow, but the Monday after. So maybe instead of finishing this game, I'll do something uh, Halloween themed. But again, we'll we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Um, we'll see what happens this week. We'll see what my work schedule is going to be like. Um, but we will, we will at some point soon in, in the next couple weeks, we will complete the, the Ace Attorney three episode three. We doing it. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I guess that's all for now. I guess I will end the stream. Happy birthday to Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. <laughs> and what more can I say? I will end the stream now, and I'll see you next time. Stay in touch, stay stay cool, stay chill, stay hot, stay snazzy. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but take care, and until we meet again, goodbye.